we're now in the happy situation where we have our training loop running on the GPU um, and we need to ask ourselves, is it better? Um, so at this point in the lesson, we're going to look at how we can compare performance between the GPU and the CPU. And there are two types of performance that we're going to think about. Firstly, we're going to ask, will the machine learning performance of my model improve when I use the GPU? i.e. will my performance metrics from the classification report improve? And secondly, will the computational performance of my model improve when I use the GPU? i.e. is it going to run faster? So the main objectives for this part of the lesson are to be able to calculate the runtime of a GPU-enabled training loop and to be able to compare that between the CPU and the GPU. But before we get to that um, that part of the le lesson, let's first look at the model performance, i.e. The, the, the machine learning metrics that we use to evaluate the performance of our algorithm when it's applied to the data. So from the introduction to machine learning lesson, you use the classification report from scikit-learn to compare um, the predicted labels from your uh, test set to the um, true or known labels from that same test set. So in order to compare the GPU performance, we simply need to rerun that classification report um, on our GPU trained model. So let's start off where we finished at the end of the previous section. We've just completed the training on the GPU and we've had a little look at uh, finding out what device our outputs are on. And we can now take our trained model and we can put our test data through it. So if we simply run the next cell, which places the um, test data through the model, what we see is that we immediately get an error. And it's an error that we've seen before. We're seeing that same runtime error where the code is expecting something to be on the GPU, but it, instead it's finding that it's still on the CPU. And if we go and look back at the code in the cell, we can find quite quickly that the problem is coming from this line because the test data itself is still natively on the CPU, whereas our model is residing on the GPU. So we have a mismatch again, same error that we saw with our um, validation data. And we can easily fix that because we can just send our test data onto the GPU using that device variable that we set earlier. Like that. And if we rerun the cell, everything is now fine. Um, and let's have a look at the accuracy that we get back from that. And we can see that we're getting about 78% accuracy. Now, um, one of the things that you might notice is that the accuracy score function is not giving us the same error as we saw in the previous cell. And that's because our predictions are have been brought back onto the CPU in this line using that shortcut syntax dot CPU. And so both our uh, test labels and our predictions are now on the CPU. And if we go further down, I'm going to skip the cells where we're uh, looking at the random forest and I'm going to go straight to the classification report from scikit-learn. And if we just run again, our neural network, predictions through that classification report, um, it all works nicely because, again, those neural network predictions have already been brought back onto the CPU for us to use the classification report from scikit-learn. Okay, so how does this compare to running the same training loop but on the CPU? Well, in order to do that comparison, all we have to do is turn off the use CUDA flag. So in order to do that, we need to find where we set it. And I'm just going to manually override the output from the torch function and instead say that use CUDA is false. So we should use the CPU. And then we simply, I'm going to skip the print statements, rerun all of the following cells. Now, because we've had those if statements, so the if use CUDA statements, we don't need to change anything else to rerun on the CPU. And our training loop is now running, and we'll give that a couple of seconds. <laughs> 
Okay, our CPU training loop is almost complete. One more epoch to go. Ah, there we go. And our final validation error looks the same as it was before. Now let's just check our devices, just for completeness. And we can see that everything is on the CPU already. And also you can see that those functions which bring things onto the CPU just basically don't do anything. So now let's rerun our test predictions. And before I rerun this next cell, take a good look at the accuracy we got from our GPU training. And let's see how it compares to the CPU training. And we can see that it's, it's identical. So we've got an identical accuracy. And let's quickly look at the classification report. This one's slightly more difficult to, to keep in your mind whilst we rerun it, but it comes out exactly the same. So what we can see is that it doesn't matter whether we train our machine learning model on the GPU or the CPU, we get the same machine learning performance, the same performance against test data sets. So the model we've trained is the same, regardless of the processor that we've trained it on. And that's exactly how things should be. Now, one thing that you might have noticed whilst you were rerunning the training loop on the CPU was that it seemed to run quite a lot faster on the CPU than the GPU. And that's perhaps not what we were expecting. So let's just double check that by running a proper timing test. Now, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use the time library, Python time library, and I'm going to use the time.time .time function from that Python library. Now, this is the little function that basically returns the time in seconds since January 1st, 1970. And, uh, you know, on its own, it's really not that useful unless you're very, very interested in how long things have been since 1970. But what it is good for is taking differences between time points. So what I'm going to do is in the notebook, I'm going to add a cell here just to import the library, just like that. I'll just run that straight away. And then I'm going to wrap my training loop in two time points, a start time point, so start equals time dot time, and an end time point, so end equals time dot time, just like that. Make sure the indent is correct, and then I'm going to be lazy and copy this statement here, and I'm going to print out the difference between those two, which will tell me how long my training loop took to run. So let's uh, kick that off and just let it go for a little while. And now our training loop has completed. We can see that it took about 150 seconds to run the 10 epochs of training on the CPU. So what's that? That's about two and a half minutes to, to run those 10 epochs. The other thing you might notice is that the final validation error has changed from the number that we had previously. And that's because we didn't reinitialize the weights of the network when we rerun the loop, which means that instead of doing, instead of rerunning the original 10 epochs of training, we've run an additional 10 epochs of training. And so this is the number after about 20 epochs of training this network. So we want to demonstrate to ourselves that this is actually faster than running on the GPU. So we need to repeat our timing test running on the GPU. Now, the, the first thing we do is, of course, to change that use CUDA flag back so that we can make use of the GPU. But we're also going to change a couple of other things. So let me just run the cell skip the print statements, we specify our device variable, we specify our epochs, our data loaders, net, reinitialize our network. Okay, we're still going to use the time library and we're still going to use the same start point in our loop, but for a GPU timing test we have to add in one more thing. And that thing is an instruction telling the GPU 
that it needs to synchronize its processes before we calculate the end point in our timing test. Now, the reason we do this is because processes on a GPU run asynchronously. And what that means is that when we send a command to the GPU, it doesn't necessarily run immediately, but instead it joins a queue and waits to run. So by calling this synchronize command, what we're doing is we're instructing the GPU to basically complete all of the waiting calculations before we move on to this next line. So we're ensuring that all of the calculations on the GPU have finished before we specify our end time. So let's take this line and add it into our notebook. We want it to be just before that end point. And now that's in place, we can rerun our training. And let's leave that going for a little while. So now our training is complete on the GPU and we can take a look at the runtime that we've calculated and we can see immediately that it's significantly longer than the 150 seconds that the training took on the CPU. Instead, we're up at uh, 450 seconds. So, you know, it's a big difference and it's perhaps an unexpected one because um, we expect things to run faster on the GPU. I mean, that's primarily why we why, why we buy them, right? Um, so the question is, why is it running more slowly on the GPU than it is on the CPU? And the answer is because we're not giving the GPU enough to do. The neural network that we've been using um, in our example only has five neurons per layer. It's really, really small. And so the matrix multiplications um, that we're doing to, to train the weights are just as efficient on the CPU as on the GPU, plus we don't have to move the data around. So the thing we need to take away from this is that the GPU is not always faster. In fact, we would need to increase the number of neurons in our layers to have a thousand neurons a layer before the calculations became big enough for the GPU to actually be better than the CPU. So for very small neural networks or neural networks that only use very small data sets, the CPU is, is basically better. Um, and the reason for that is because of the number of learnable weights in the neural network. So we can increase the number of learnable weights either by increasing the number of neurons or by increasing the number of input data that go into the first layer of the neural network. And what you can see from this figure here which is showing the difference in runtime between a CPU in blue and the GPU in green, is that when we get to about a thousand neurons per layer, our CPU runtime shoots up, whereas our GPU runtime basically stays the same. So our GPU doesn't care if our neural network has five neurons or 2000 neurons per layer, it'll take about the same amount of time to run. So for bigger neural networks or bigger data sets, that's when the GPU is really useful. Otherwise, it's just not always necessary. Now, the number of neurons you need in your neural network is an application specific question. So that's something that only you can tell based on the particular problem that you're looking at. And we're at the end of this section of the lesson. The key points have been that Using a GPU will not improve your machine learning performance, i.e. it won't improve the performance metrics because the model you train on the GPU should be exactly the same as the model you train on the CPU. And then another message is that using a GPU will only improve your computational performance, i.e. your runtime, under certain, certain circumstances. And those circumstances are usually having a big network or a big data set. And the third, um, key point to remember is that GPU processes are asynchronous. So if you're going to run timing tests on the GPU, you need to synchronize your processes before the end point of the timing test. Okay, and I will see you in the next section.